Today is the day for the ride of our lives, when a confetti of color will fill up the sky. Plenty of pink, a bounty of blue, and orange and green and yellow too. We all play a part, both me and you, as we build our very own hot air balloons. We'll gather supplies and make them our own and prepare to take flight into the great unknown. It doesn't take us long to see that we all work so very differently. Some of us work alone, and some of us work side by side. Some of us are quiet and think things through, and others prefer to chit-chat about all we have to do. Some of us think through every possibility before we jump in. And some of us know what we like before we even begin. Sometimes we're scientific and rely on our smarts. Sometimes we're creative and lean into the arts. Some of us are resourceful. We like to work with whatever's on hand. And some of us are extravagant. We like to go big whenever we can. Some of us are teachers and share what we know. But all of us are learners. Together is how we grow. So by now you can probably see how we all work so very differently. We've done our very best and now it's time to fly. See how beautiful it can be when our differences share the same sky? We may not look or work or think the same, but we all have an important part to play. All of us can be kind, compassionate, and gracious. All of us can be helpful, considerate, and courageous. So remember who you are. This is your life to live. Don't ever hold back. You have so much to give. You're one of a kind, and it's so clear to see. The world needs who you were made to be. The End Now, who do you think I am? Am I the purple principal? Yes, hello, it's your principal, Mrs. Fragoso. Or am I? <laughs> be who you are meant to be. The end. Today we are reading Because. Because a man named Ludwig wrote beautiful music, a man named Franz was inspired to create his own. Because many years later, people wanted to hear Franz's beautiful music, they formed an orchestra. Because a man had practiced since he was a kid, he was asked to join. Because a woman studied night and day, she too was asked to play. Because many others loved and practiced their instruments, there were enough musicians. Because someone created a poster about Franz's music, tickets were sold. Because the train conductor stopped the train at the Grand Concert Hall, the orchestra conductor arrived. Because the orchestra librarian had copies of the score, an orchestra rehearsed.
Because workers checked the lights and the seats and swept the floors, the grand hall was ready. Because the time had come, the ushers opened the doors. Because someone's uncle caught a cold, someone's aunt had an extra ticket for someone special. Because the usher helped the aunt and her special guest, they found their seats. Because everyone was there to hear beautiful music, it was quiet. In row C, seat 14, sat the girl with the uncle's ticket. She heard the beautiful music written by the man named Franz, and it changed her. The girl was changed. From that moment on, the girl learned everything she could about music. Because it fed her, soon she started to write music too. Because, like Franz, the young woman had something to share. Over time, the woman became very good because she worked very hard. One night, her music was discovered because she was also very lucky. Then she was invited to perform her music at the Grand Concert Hall because so many people wanted to hear it. Her composition was dedicated to the uncle in row C, seat 14, because it was his ticket that brought her here. World premiere Symphony Number no. One, The Cold. And that night, someone else, w someone else was changed. That is how it happens. The end. Good day, boys and girls. Here is the book, The Snowy Day. One winter morning, Peter woke up and looked out the window. Snow had fallen during the night. It covered everything as far as he could see. After breakfast, he put on his snowsuit and ran outside. The snow was piled up very high along the street to make a path for walking. Crunch, 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 his feet sank into the snow. He walked with his toes pointing out like this. He walked with his nose pointing out like that. Then he dragged his feet slowly to make tracks. And he found something sticking out of the snow that made a new track. A stick that was just right for smacking a snow-covered tree. Down fell the snow, plop, on top of Peter's head. He thought it would be fun to join the big boys in their snowball fight, but he knew he wasn't old enough, not yet. So he made a smiling snowman, and he made angels. He pretended he was a mountain climber. 
he climbed up a great big tall heaping mountain of snow and slid all the way down. He picked up a handful of snow and another and still another. He packed it round and firm and put the snowball in his pocket for tomorrow. Then he went into his warm house. He told his mother all about his adventures while she took off his wet socks. And he thought and thought and thought about them. Before he got into bed, he looked in his pocket. His pocket was empty. The snowball wasn't there. He felt very sad. While he slept, he dreamed that the sun had melted the snow all away. But when he woke up, his dream was gone. The snow was still everywhere. New snow was falling. After breakfast, he called to his friend from across the hall, and they went out together into the deep, deep snow. The end. Hi, I'm the Pig Panda, and I'm going to be reading you The Big Cheese by Dory John. They call me the Big Cheese. Or oh, say it with me, please. The Big Cheese. You better believe it. That's right, folks. I'm the biggest, cheesiest piece of shit around. I'm really something to behold. Take a look at me. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Hmm? Have you ever observed a more impressive cheese in your life? I'm not just my stature either. It's my presence, my vibe, the energy I emanate, the excellence I exude. It's the way I fill a room or a theater or stadium. Wherever I go, I cause a fuss. Heads turn, jaws drop, gasps are audible. That's why they call me Cheese. Oh, say it with me, please. The Big Cheese. You better believe it. How did I get such a good, or should I say Gouda, reputation? Well, I wasn't always a big shot. I grew up on a crowded platter in a tiny kitchen. It was an unremarkable little curd. We lived quite quiet lives of pasteurization. But I wasn't happy with the status quo. Oh no, I wanted to make a big old name for myself. So I resolved to become a big cheese. I wanted the praise the tears, the spotlight, the attention, the ovations, and the celebrations. I set to work, and before long, I was on the fast track to success. I dressed to impress, I shredded the competition, and I stole every show. And then, I'd brag non-stop to anybody who'd listen. Hey, did you see the score of that goal where I was literally yawning? What was the secret to my success? Well, I stuck to the things I was good at. That way, I couldn't possibly fail. Did it get a little bored never trying anything new? I suppose. But it didn't matter as long as everyone agreed that I Oh, say it with me, please. The Big Cheese. But then, one faithful day, I met Wedge. He was new in town, and he seemed to be my exact opposite in every way. He was quiet, and I was loud. He was shy, and I was bold. While I dominated conversations, 
he kept to himself. I didn't pay much attention at first, because why would I? I was too preoccupied with being the center of my universe. And then without warning, everything changed. Here's what happened. Every summer, a tiny village staged an all-day cheese catalog. Guess who had first place trophies from the last six years? Hmm? Oh, say it with me, please. The big cheese. You better believe it. This year's opening ceremony started at 5 a.m. Sharp. I was fully primed and prepared to prevail. First up was a foot race, and I zipped into the lead. Within seconds though, there was someone on my heels. I could hear his breath, the pitter patter of his agile feet. It was Wedge! I could not believe it! Oh, he was fast. Not just fast, but skilled, disciplined, he paced himself. We were neck and neck for most of the race, but when I slipped on a road pebble, which swerved, sped up, and beat me by a nose. A cheese nose. For the first time, I come in second place. Oh, the indignity. But there was no time to stop because my next leg of the competition had already started. It was a game of chess. Before I could blink or think, which had taken my king in four moves. And while I was busy protesting to the judges, he'd already moved on. The following events were a blur of loss after loss after humiliating loss. There was hat making, sheep herding, and bread buttering. It turned out that Wedge was quietly excellent at everything. Even when he won though, he didn't glow. He was so humble. It was odd. It was disconcerting. It was absolutely baffling. Finally, I watched in dismay as Wedge trumps me one last time, and the day came to a bitter end. Well, bitter for me at least. I went through every possible emotion. Oh, God, no, boo, Wait. until I finally exhausted myself. As I lay in the muck, I heard a thunderous voice making a dreaded announcement. First place goes to newcomer, Wedge Wedgeman. <laughs> the crowd roared its approval. What had just happened? It was honestly hard to fathom. I closed my eyes. Suddenly, inexplicably, I felt a sense of calm come over me. I, used, I listened to my breathing, to the steady beating of my heart. Yes, I have lost again and again and again. But after all that, I actually felt okay. Relieved even. I suddenly knew that my world wasn't going to crumble. I picked myself up, dusted myself off, and headed home. Before too long, I spotted Wedge. He wasn't busy celebrating or bragging. He was just watching the stream go by. He looked content. We chatted for a bit. Turned out that Wedge had a fascinating life story. I found myself getting caught up in a great conversation. A conversation that wasn't all about me. Huh.
that day, I realized something. Maybe it didn't matter if I was the best at everything. In fact, perhaps it was healthy for me to lose for once. And sure, my ego is bruised in the short term, but over time, I gained some perspective on what's really important. Losing taught me about empathy and humility. It showed me that I'd become so focused on winning that I was missing out on the joy of participating. And it helped me see that I can live with defeat, even if I get a bit angry or frustrated at first. These days, I'm trying not to worry about whether I win or lose. I don't have to impress everyone all the time. I let others have the spotlight. And I've taken up new hobbies just for me. Yes, I'm trying to be a better real chatter. So now when I brag about something, well, I mostly brag about my friends. Whoa, do you see that? What a move! Because it turns out that anyone from a crumble of gorgonzola to a fleck of feather to an unassuming wedge of brie can be, oh, say it with me, please, the big cheese. You better believe it. Strawberry by Julianne Moore. Once upon a time, there was a little girl who was just like everyone else. She was seven. Hey, I lost a tooth. She was short. She could ride a bike. She was just like everyone else, except for one thing. She had red hair and something worse. Freckles. Her brother had, her father had freckles. Her mother had, didn't have freckles. Her sister didn't have freckles. Her baby brother. Oh yeah, he had freckles. But he was just a baby. People always had something to say about her freckles. Hey, what happened to you? You look like your daughter. Daughter, if you've got more freckles, you would just do one big freckle and that would be a tan. Does it hurt? You look dirty. You look like a giraffe, but a short one with freckles. Can I smell them? But most of the time, they just said, freckle face strawberry. Freckled face strawberry felt really bad. She needed to get rid of her freckles fast. She tried scrubbing them. Get out of the bathroom. She tried lemon juice. You smell funny. She tried markers, but her mom got mad. I told you never to draw on yourself. I'm wearing makeup. Nothing worked. If she couldn't make them the freckles go away, she would just have to hide. It worked. All her freckles were gone. It worked so well, she started wearing it to school. It worked so well, nobody said anything about her freckles anymore. It worked so well, none of her friends knew where she was. Have you seen her? She's short and she can ride a bike. She has freckles all over her body. Freckle face strawberry was kind of sad and hot and a little itchy. After school, the playground, she was lonely. Everyone was playing except for freckle faced Strawberry. She was sitting in the shade, wishing she wasn't so hot. So somebody tugged on her shirt. Mama? It was a baby. freckle faced Strawberry knew about babies because of her little brother. Mama, don't bug me, baby. Mama, I said, don't bug me, baby. Wah, all right. I'm just pretty hot. The baby started to laugh. She laughed and laughed and laughed. Hey, what's so funny? Freckles. She loves freckles. 
She thinks they're funny. They're not. I should know. I know how you feel. I'm covered in them. I can't see any. I know. Mine kind of went away a little when I grew up. I bet yours will, too. Whatever. She was just glad she wasn't hot anymore. Or itchy. Suddenly, Freckleface Strawberry heard some familiar voices. Freckleface Strawberry, go down the slide with me. Freckleface Strawberry, you have to meet the new girl. She wears a ski mask all the time. Freckleface Strawberry, were you sick? Freckleface Strawberry, we missed you. Freckleface Strawberry smiled so wide, she thought she would crack open. She wasn't hot, she wasn't itchy, and she wasn't sad anymore. care about having a million freckles when she had a million friends. And maybe one that mom was right and her freckles would go away. And freckles face strawberry was really just like everyone else. She grew up and her freckles did not go away. In fact, she lived happily ever after.
and sailed back over a year, and in and out of weeks, and through a day, and into the night of his very own room, where he found his supper waiting for him. And it was still hot. The end. Oh. Yeah. Yeah.